So, Harris, let's talk about that. Is the White House talking at this summit? You attended yesterday. You'll be attending again today. Are they talking about this apocalyptic vision and what to do to counter ISIS in that way? Well, they're, they're talking about the real issues that, uh, that, that impact uh, this, uh, this conflict. What they're talking about is, is the recruitment strategies of ISIS, which is mainly online. Uh, they're recru re recruiting people who are disenfranchised, who are marginalized, who have grievances. Uh, and it's not just a religious, narrow religious outlook. Uh, it is based on grievance. It is based on things that are happening on the ground. And they seem that they have the answer to a lot of young people around the world who are looking to to find identity, who might be going through identity crises. So they're looking at it comprehensively. And I think it's important that we don't narrow it down and say there's only one factor that's impacting the recruitment of ISIS. ISIS is not, is not a religious organization per se. It uses religion to justify their criminal acts. But at the end of the day, they are tr trying to feed on the identity crises and grievances that a lot of people feel, whether in Europe or in the Middle East and North Africa. Harris, you know this White House summit has been criticized for being too vague, too broad, too hastily put together. Having been there yesterday, do you feel as though substantive things are coming out of it? I think there's, my organization has been there because there are substantive messages coming out of it. Uh, I think, number one, they're identifying that you have to be able to partner with communities. The only way that we're going to be successful in any countering any violent extremism message is that communities are the ones who are leading it and communities are the ones who are driving this conversation. It cannot be a government-led, law enforcement-led conversation. We have to ensure that communities are empowered, they feel that they can actually take up the mantle of this discussion, and that their rights are protected as well because the biggest anecdote to the message of ISIS and Al-Qaeda is that we live in pluralistic societies as Americans, uh, as people in the free world, and that we engage together. We cannot uh, cause divisions amongst faith groups and ethnic groups because that plays right into the hands of ISIS. In fact, President Obama talked about that very thing this morning in an LA Times op-ed that was just released. Let me read to you an excerpt of it. He says, our campaign to prevent people around the world from being radicalized to violence is ultimately a battle for hearts and minds. We know right. that military force alone cannot solve this problem, nor can we simply take out terrorists who kill innocent civilians. The world must continue to lift up the voice of Muslim clerics and scholars who teach the true peaceful nature of Islam.